Wow, is this lighting just getting weird or is that okay? I don't know. I've been playing with the lighting a little bit in the office. I'm trying to get, get my home off, my home home theater set up. Hello, folks. Also, this, this camera might be getting a little bit old, too. I don't know. I did have to change a light bulb, though. Maybe it's a weird light, weird light bulb. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, maybe I screwed up something, too. I've been goofing around with this monitor way too much. This camera is getting a little bit. Hello, folks. Welcome back for I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And it's Wednesday, so that means, you know, it's, it's time to talk about, even though this will probably go up Thursday morning, uh, it's time, time to talk about AEW, because this, this is, I think, the first go-home show for AEW that I've seen in a while. And I would like to first apologize to all my fans out there. I think I screwed something up. Because I was getting frustrated because the one place where I watch wrestling, the one main site's kind of, I, th I think it was busted by the FBI. Oh, wait. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up. I like getting thumbs up. But yeah. Um, so I had to go to a secondary site. So I was getting frustrated. So I think in my anger and my rage, I think... I forgot to save the live stream I did. But again, we'll see. Sonny Bembo, this Memorial Day, the bum slicks. Definitely somewhere. Maybe I'll have, maybe I'll have a Battle Royal. I don't know. I'll figure out something. I, I forget who has the always underweight belt, actually. I think Dan Blaze might have it. So maybe we'll have an always underweight. I have to make the, I have to make that card soon. That's the next thing to do when I'm in the bathroom. But yeah, that's a whole other issue. So I do apologize for that. I don't think I managed to get it up. I actually did make a new graphic because Tuesday is soup day, with the exception of probably next Tuesday, because next Tuesday is going to be leftovers. So I have my one picture, my one, th wait, no, yeah, my one thumb, my one thumbnail set up, well, at least that disgusting El Vagabundo has it all set up, and then, yep, yeah, because it'll be Tuesday soup day, I still have to put in some graphics, so Tuesday will be a soup day impact wrestling, and yeah, I just chose Pepsi, because I think that's the only thing I had. At the time. But enough about that. Let's talk about some thank yous. Yes. For some reason, when there's less people and the wrestling is only so so. Oh, I have to add him. So let's see. So there's that. That's going to be. Wow. So, Mike, that God. Thank you. You sort of earned that six count.
I'm going to butcher this name. Swag Sake 22. Oh, I didn't get it that. You sort of master the air drum and the air guitar. See here. I have to write this stuff better. Dantron ninety nine. Who else right? Yeah, Dantron ninety nine. You sir are always carrying around that briefcase boombox. Matthew, you, sir, can crawl out of here. <laughs> Tra-la-la. You win by dirty pin, sir. That cheating heel you are. We want tables. You, sir, are a member of the Al Generico Band. And then finally, last but last, not least, Habitat. Holy shit. I believe we had we all had a fairly in-depth discussion about the AEW's women division. I think ranking them on cuteness, the cutest one in my eyes is Chris Datlander. She's number one hottie on AEW. I think a close number two is Shauna. 
And then probably Hikaru Shida is third. I think mainly those three would look like like natural normal women. I think who else is there? Who else did we mention? I think we just forgot we forgot about poor Leva Bates. We haven't seen the librarian in a while. We haven't seen Leva Bates the librarian in a while. Oh, they should do more with her. I forget where. Because I know she used to be in NXT, so she has to be here somewhere in Florida. We all agree Riho is like towards the bottom. Some say Britt Baker's okay looking. To me, she's just way too skinny. And Nyla Rose is poor man's Fabi Apache. At least to me. I'm trying to think. And then there's like the other women they kind of toss in there every so often. I think those are really the main ones. This Brandy really doesn't wrestle. We haven't seen awesome. We haven't seen awesome Kong in a while. Mel used to be there. Every so often we see magical girl Yumi. So often, um, Freddie Mercury woman, I think, went back to Japan. I'm trying to think what other women there are in AEW. They used to have a pretty sizable roster. I think they've whittled things down to stars and jobbers, but I think the coronavirus screwed up everything for them. But that's okay. I think we were talking about that. What else were we talking about? Besides the quality of Wualt, which is bad. But let's get to the show proper. So AEW starts off. Starts off with the exalted one. The exalted! Brody Lee. And how he's at ringside and he just, uh, he has his belt. And he's six number ten! The perfect 10. Oh, I know what we talked about, too. <laughs> yeah, how Sean Spears has a threesome every night. With, with his wife, Peyton Rice, and Billy Kay. The iconics! But that's that's okay. We'll, we'll save that. I shouldn't be saying that on an AEW show. But, oh, JR feels free to mention his time in the WWE. Especially tables, ladders, chairs. Mentioning the Dudleys. And the Hardys, Edge and Christian, so. Who knows? Uh, so it starts off uh, 10. The 10 is going to fight John Moxley. He's just there to beat him up. Uh, Brody Lee really could care less about what happens. Because remember, Brody Lee's going to face John Moxley. And I actually have the official match card. Or for the most part, the, the match card. All set up for El Vagabundo to make his picks. I think there's going to be one more. No. Oh. One less match. I don't know when that's going to play, though. They're not going to have... A... Ah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You will see him for a different page. Who knows? But So Ten's there to be up. John Moxley. John Moxley comes not from the crowd, but from the outside. Uh, if anyone's ever been to Daly's Arena, it's really a big amphitheater. The front stage actually goes to the outside, and then all the seats... So you have the stage, you have kind of open area on either side, and then you have the more traditional seating area. Normally Moxley comes from the outside, but I think someone told Renee that, hey, Renee, we saw you at AEW. She wasn't there this time. I, I understand supporting her husband, and it wasn't as big a thing as Britt Baker being at an NXT show. Oh, was that pie on the face for her? Pie on her pie for her. Hmm. The poutine pie. But that's okay. Uh -oh. Now this thing's being a freaking itch now. Burn it. That's okay. At least maybe, hopefully it's healing. Oh wow, my cat dropped a deuce in her litter box. Every so often you really can't smell it. But that's okay, it'll be cleaned up shortly. 
right after right as, as I started processing this shit. This shit. How about that? Uh, so 10, he goes in, he does a toss suplex. On um, 10, 10 goes outside, Mox follows him. 10 starts tossing Mox into the barricade because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Uh, then when they get back, that, that 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 knee, oh, that vicious knee by 10. The ground and pound. But you know what? Moxley's strong there. He's like, hit me. He hit he hit a DDT that and the DDT sets up the paradigm paradigm shift. And Moxley starts throwing chairs and, and goes and takes the mic and says, Hey, hey, Brody Lee, if you don't come out here with my belt, I'm breaking your buddy's arm. Brody Lee just left. So Mox said, okay, you want it that way? Wah! Breaks the arm of 10. Uh, this was kind of to be expected. You just you just figure that 10 might be there to soften up John Moxley. Not so much. Um, John Moxley matches are becoming very systematic, kind of like what happened in WWE. I don't know if he was falling back on that. We'll see what happens for Double or Nothing because they're going to probably be the main event. This match itself, meh. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And honestly, this was the low point of the show because everything else was really good. Then we have MJF coming out and he's taking on Marco Stunt. Oh, wow. MJF is not a big guy. But there is a big size difference between him and, and geez, Marco Stunt. They announced him at 120 pounds. There's an old phrase that we used to use in Michigan. You're 110 pounds soaking wet with hockey gear on. He's 120 pounds soaking wet in hockey gear. Goalie hockey gear at that, too. Because uh, MJF, I mean, looks so much more defined and chiseled. Marco Sun even has like a skinny gut on him, too. Which is weird. He's like the fat skinny. I know I'm just fat, fat, but Marco stunts skinny, fat. My, one, one of my bosses was like that. He was skinny, but yet he had a gut. So it's weird. Um, MJ just kind of toys with Marco stunt, uh, beats him up a little bit, puts him in the bear hug. And Marco stunt at one time tried to do a sunset flip. But no, he just choke picked him up then an overhead belly to belly, which I didn't even know was in MJF's repertoire. So, but again, this is Marco's son. It's like me wrestling my nephews. Like I would just sit there and like squat suplex them. So you know what? I'm not gonna suplex you, I'm gonna put you on my shoulder and I'm gonna set you up for the GTS and I'm gonna put you to sleep. You're like, what? Ah! <laughs> and I delivered the, the, the spinning neck breaker. The reverse F5. The, the 5F, as I call it. It's my nephews in the pool. I was always like, suit, like, I could toss belly to belly my nephews into the pool, too. I mean, that's not really that hard. So for an MJF, a, a trained professional to do it to a marketably smaller professional. Is, is nowhere beyond the realm of possibility. Then, of course, oh, Marcus, the, woo! I'm um, high styling, woo! Profiling, woo! Up all night, woo! Kissing the ladies, woo! Limousine riding, woo! Mile high clubbing, woo! You did the Ric Flair strut, baby. He almost did it better than Rick Flair himself. I wonder if he learned that from Charlotte. I don't know. Charlotte's learning something, but she's learning that stuff from, from Andrade. Like I saw, I think they had um, on the one uh, WooTube show, they had like Tessa Blanchard's Rise to Champion. Daga's there. Yeah. Daga did stuff to Tessa Blanchard that night. Tessa Blanchard was probably exhausted, and Daga's like, I shall pleasure you, my lady. Um, so let's see here. What else about this match? Oh, even Wardlow started choke for Marco's son. 
Marcuson did make a little bit of a comeback with the drop kicks, but yeah, Marco stunt right. That's about the best I can say about that. There's a Tiger Driver shoulder breaker into the Fujiwara armbar. MJF makes Marco stunt tap out, puts on the ring, whap. Nails Marco stunt with it, says this, and then of course the rest of Jurassic Express comes out. And this match was fun. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. Marco Sun at least got some offense in. He tried. And he actually, again, with the drop piece and a little bit more, more flippy stuff, has managed to impress MJF a little bit. This is a cheeseburger of a match. And then eventually the rest of Jurassic Express come out to make the save. Uh, MJF and Wardlow. The Wardlow... Almost, almost ate it. Um, because of the way it's set up, there's not really a ramp, but there's like a stage and the ring, but there's like this weird gap between the ring steps and the stage. MJF could, could do it. You have to go up, up the steps, onto the ring, and then onto the ramp. Warlow forgot there was a little gap between the, the ring and, and the stage and almost ate it. And, and Lucius Saurus said, ah, you sucker. It's like, oh, even at least Wardlow laughed it off. And I think it, it could have been a lot worse. I'm sure wrestlers have, well, Titus, worldwide, worldwide. Of course, took like a much worse dive on his entrance away. So I can't really fault him for that. Um, and then MJF talks it up. So again, the fact that AEW has wrestlers, at least ringside, you can hear them. Again, it's, it's meant for acoustics from that area. So you don't necessarily need to have a, a, a mic'd up ring. And MJF is so loud anyway. He's so good. Again, makes it so much easier. And it's more appealing watching it on TV when you can actually see like other people's reactions too. Because then, you, you, then it kind of leads you into your reaction. Like, if you hear someone getting booed, it's like, oh, I should boo this guy. Boo! Boo! Some people I will always boo. Boo! Sonya Deville! Boo! Boo! Any chance I get to boo Sonya Deville, I will. But at, at least they're leading you to say, okay, he's a, he, he's a heel. Boo heels! Boo! Oh, he's a face! Yay! You're a face! 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 face. So they, they kind of motivates you a little bit more and it's not like uh just beat her up like i wasn't on the natalia shana baser match which is way too short by the way uh then there was a arn anderson Ooh, arn anderson was facing off with the shape of snake roberts i forgot if those two ever face each other or were they in two different areas at separate times. I know Arn for a while was in WCW, and I think Jake the Snake was still in WWE. So I don't think the two ever had a chance. Although Arn did threaten to deliver a spine buster to Jake the Snake Roberts. So that was pretty cool. Then there was the Death Triangle. The triangle, Triangular Di Muerta. And Pox, the three faces of Pox. You had a very proper English Pac. You had COVID, you had COVID nineteen Pac wearing the face mask. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna talk like a pain. For I will deliver the pain to those people that doubt me. For just like the Batman. So he had that, and then he had just like plain bastard Pac. So that was pretty cool. The three faces of Pac. I like that. Uh, so that was pretty cool. It's good to see him doing well. Uh, Bumpslicks is probably happy that he's doing well too. And again, hello, Bumpslicks. Yep. I don't know what happened to that stream last night. I screwed up somewhere. Then we had a weird match because it was Orange. Um, yeah, so that yeah, so that match. Yeah, I said it was a cheeseburger match. Uh, we then we had Orange Cassidy versus Ray Phoenix. This was kind of this was kind of weird. Um. It's weird to see Ray Phoenix in a comedy match, mainly because he's such an amazing technical luchador. But when he's doing comedy, eh, it, 
It's not the mask either, because people say the mask takes away your facial expressions. You can have amazing facial expressions with a mask. Um, but with this, I don't think he's used to doing comedy. He's used to being dark, and he's either used to being just plain old happy baby face. Or he's just used to used to being like villainous possessed heel, so he's not used to being like like comic relief like straight guy to like comedy guy. So I don't think I don't even think in Lucha Underground he was ever he wasn't any comic mashes. There were some there were some Steve the mechanic, uh, the pizza guy that had some comedy, but may just say <laughs> the pizza guy's a pro wrestler now. And that honestly was about it. So, but with Phoenix, it kind of felt weird. Um, so, Orange Cassidy, he just kind of tranquilos. He dodges everything Phoenix can throw at him. Uh, Phoenix, he's getting frustrated by Orange Cassidy, like most wrestlers are. But back in the ring, Phoenix goes after the arm of Orange Cassidy. There's a top rope spike DT by Orange Cassidy. That looked good. Um, and then for some reason, Kip Sabian showed up in the ladder and distracted. Orange Cassidy, and the referee. The referee has Sethitis. If you don't know what Sethitis is, Seth Rollins is notoriously known for getting distracted during his wrestling matches. Both Orange Cassidy and the ref had Sethitis because Ray Phoenix, to end the match, kicked Orange Cassidy right in the groin, hit him with a cutter, and that was it. The referee's like, oh, he hit him with the cutter. That's a legal wrestling move. One, two, three. And then, so this is a, this is an okay match. I I just don't think Ray Phoenix has the, the comedic timing. Like if you put in Orange Cassidy versus Colt Cabana versus Yano, oh, that's gold. But not Ray Phoenix. So it's just one of those things. That also, some of the older wrestlers, they get comedy a little bit more. It's not, you're, you either, like, it took Colt Cabana probably years of being with Delirious to understand the comedic timing. That, and he really, like, picked it up. He was a natural at it. Delirious is an amazing... I want to say comedic wrestling. He does great wrestling, but he does it with such comedic effect and timing. But it doesn't take away from the match. Orange Cassidy is a little too over the top. Or he's just very tranquil, as, 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 as stated by Jim Craig. He calls him My Little Dog Pockets. But so, with this, eh, it was a ham sandwich of a match. And, of course, Kip Sabian is still up top of the ladder, so uh, Scorpio Sky and Frankie Gazarian come on down. They, they of course, shove the ladder. Cole Cabana shows up, and then it's just everyone who's going to be in, and then the ladder match shows up, kind of typical spot. Uh, Cole Cabana had a pretty nice last time in Utah. Because what happened for a long time, it was Riho, who's literally... I hate to say it, but I do. I will agree with Jim Cornette. She's a 90 pound Japanese schoolgirl. She was trying to wrestle women, and the women actually had to do a lot to put Riho over. But now, I mean, Chris Statlander's cutest woman. She she looks. She has the look. She has the build. Although she keeps on spraying her leg, her legs a lot though. That just might be something I noticed. Who knows? But she looks like if, if, if I don't know if it's tattoos, but no, cause she has a pretty distinct look though. She has the tattoos. If Chris Statlander came into my store or the store I work at, not my store, like dressed t-shirt and jeans, I'd have no clue who she was because she would look like an, a normal woman. Again, the same is true of Hikaru Shida. She looks like a normal woman. She, she's very cute looking, very attractive. 
fit looking, but not skinny fit and not overly womanly jacked. So again, she looks like a woman. Um, again, the other Shana looks like a looks like she looks like a, any woman you can see at the mall. You can go to the mall. There's Shana. Again, unless she starts speaking Portuguese and shows up in like her blue and red bikini spandex outfit asking for wrestling shoes. I have no idea that that was Shana. I just, here in Daytona Beach, that happens all the time. But, yeah, and, and again, a few others. Uh, Britt Baker, to me, is on the skinny side. I think I commented to a friend. It's like, yeah, Britt Baker has a six-pack. Not because she works out, but because there's nothing there covering, covering said six-pack. Britt Baker is skinny. Uh, Nyla Rose, for everything that people said about her, not my cup of tea, but she's a more believable woman's champion, at least. Again, like I've called Nyla Rose, Nyla Rose is the poor man's Fabi Apache. Because the two of them, they could, they could be... Actually, I'm surprised AEW never went after Fabi Apache. Because you could have Nyla Rose team up with Fabi Apache, and they'd be amazing as a tag team. Ooh. Hear that, Cody Rhodes? All I want is one shiny quarter and no more copyright violations. That's all I ask. It's not that much. And, well, yeah, I, I won't push my luck. I was going to say, like, ringside seats, but, but when they come to Jacksonville only. But, yeah, just a shiny quarter and no more copyright violations from AEW. If you ever do sign Fabi Apache and put her together with Nyla Rose. Because they could be the female equivalent of Chief J. Strongbow and Wahoo McDaniel. Ooh, that would be good. Yeah. Chief J. S Nyla Rose and the Native American Beast and Fabi Apache. Yeah, that could just be like Wahoo McDaniels and Jay Strongbow. Indeed. I like that idea. That's a really good idea. But so is um, Chris Atlander and Hikaru Shida taking on Britt Baker and Nyla Rose. Again, you have the, the, the faces and heels who will have their singles match. Uh, very typical format like they've done in the past. Uh, Chris Atlander and Hikaru Shida, they're smart. They know that Nyla Rose is a bigger woman. They're going to beat her up. They're going to double team her. Britt Baker is a cowardly heel. Cower without your man. Baby! Adam Cole, baby! I haven't shouted that in a while. Baby! There we go. Get it out of my system for a bit. Um, then, again, Nyla Rose is just more power. She's just stronger. Um, Chris Stant and Chris Statlander, that, that shows up. Again, uh, she, she she beats on Chris Allen a bit. Does the old Boston Whale Hawk. And then just shows the nose hook at the same time. She didn't boop her. No, she didn't. She didn't go boop. She just, she just began to rip. And that's what happens with this camera. It's just getting old. And I think I just had an itch on my head too. So with that, again, it was just the fish hook and the nose hook. And then the Dragon Sleeper. Oh, the suplex. Nyla Rose is pretty good. And then Brett and Nyla Rose started arguing because Nyla, Nyla said, listen, listen, I, this is your turn to get in here. And Brett's like, no, you're doing fine. And then Nyla Rose, get in here. Get over here. And so he's like, oh, okay. Baby. Uh, Brent, uh, Brent eventually eats, eats the knees of Karushita. Um, she got a little of offense in. She's just a cowardly heel. She had a small package, like the first thing that happened to her. Thought she was going to lose right away. Uh, then she starts to, to beat up Karushita. Karushita, however, gets the advantage. Get... Britt Baker's terrible at eating knees. And I don't know what happened, but I think she, I think she screwed her knee up too. Because then there was a classic heel and miscue. Uh, 
Britt Baker had, I think, Chris Statlin or Hikaru Shida in the corner. Nyla Rose was going to do the big splash onto Hikaru Shida. Hikaru Shida switched. Britt Baker, Nyla Rose went splashing into poor Britt Baker. Britt Baker did something to her knee, too, because she, she was like, no, I'm done. Without her, she's being like superly cowardly heel. Um, again, Chris Statlander did the electric chair, electric chair face first slam to Nyla Rose. That was impressive. Uh, Hikaru Shida comes off with a missile drop kick. That's also impressive. Then there, there was one double team move they threw poor. They threw Nyla Rose right on top of Britt Baker. Britt Baker, Britt, Britt Baker dead, baby. Uh, uh, then there was the Beast Bomb. Nyla Rose actually won by Beast Bomb. I don't know if this was a botch because it seemed that Chris Statlander was a little bit late getting in. Britt Baker was being looked at by the doctor. I don't know if that was if that was the, the, the most dreaded part of all pro wrestling or or, or not, but but yeah. That just was weird because Nyla Rose got up and like what? she's like, huh? What happened? So oh, well, I wouldn't go get the table. So she got the table. However, Nyla Rose does not know the rules of pro wrestling. When you get the table, you go through the table. Uh, eventually, Chris Atnallener and Hikaru Shida beat up Nyla Rose on top rope. I'll tell you what, Hikaru Shida, her neck, she's a woman, but she's still on the smaller side. Her neck took a bad bump on that table. You could tell. Because even Chris Tandler was like, whoa. And that's not good when you see, when you see, like, your partner's eyes go, uh oh. That's a bad sign. That was when that was a uh, John Moxley promo. Yep, he's going to go after Brody Lee. We all know that. That's going to be the main event. Then there was a Sean Spears News SSN. Oh. Uh, and it's talking about Dustin Rhodes, so he's going to have a match with Dustin Rhodes. And for some reason, Sean Spears' hair is crooked. I don't know what it is, but it honestly looked like the Mohawk. I probably can't do this because I don't have any more. But it should be like straight. I think that's pretty much straight. But his was like starred over his, his like one eye and kind of like crossed over his head. I don't know if it was because of lack of barbers or if his wife gave him a haircut. If his wife gave him a haircut, Peyton Roy should never be giving haircuts to anyone. So, so Billy K, be, be, beware. Especially if Peyton Roy has those sheep shears. You're, you're getting some, some funky haircut. <laughs> Even down there. Oh, but wait, I digress. Um, so then this leads us to the main event of Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. They used to do the little promo first. Uh, Matt Hardy starts off by just bite, biting the fingers. Matt Hardy likes to bite. I think that's an old guy move. When you get old and really can't like fly around, all you do is bite people and headbutt people. I guess that makes sense. It's probably the two simplest things. Uh, Sam, he got, got dropped. He got dropped on the barricade. They went to the outside. They went after him. Because he is the barricade. There is the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Uh, and Sammy avoided a twist of fate. Uh, Sammy Guevara begins to work, work over Matt Hardy a little bit in the corner. He countered a razor's edge into a hurricanrana. Oh, wait. You know what? Yeah, I'll just add that in there. But that woman's match, that was actually a surf and turf match. I was shocked. And I'll edit that in somewhere. That's, that's why you saw that little surf and turf symbol pop up. But again, he countered the razor's edge into a hurricanrana. That was great. Uh... <laughs> Then, then Sammy got snake eyed to a side effect. The twist, one twist of fate. Uh, Sammy Guevara eventually rolled out of the ring. Sammy Guevara went flying. Like, 
hard into the barricade. That was weird. That barricade just like got absolutely demolished. And let's see here. Matt Hardy. Yeah, and he like got busted open the hard way. He like cut himself on something. Uh, he starts, he takes off his shoes as Sammy Guevara, bites his feet. I guess it makes sense. If you're going to bite the guy's feet, you're going to take his shoes off. Uh, Sammy Guevara hit a springboard cutter. Uh, he tried for a shooting star press, but he got, uh, Matt Hardy got the knees up, put that in a small package, hit a twist of fate. Uh, hit another, hit, this was the second twist of fate. This finally gets the pinfall. Matt Hardy wins in a really good surf and turf match. That's not the end, because as Matt Hardy tries tries to murder poor Sammy Guevara, he gets distracted. Because up on the Titan Tron, you see Chris Jericho holding a baseball bat, and Kenny Omega is leaning against the field goal post. Jake Hagar throws some water on him as if to revive him. The uh, uh, Ortiz and Santana are there. Probably the powerful LAX is there. They're beating on Kenny Omega. I'll tell you what. He is so, Matt Hardy still has some ups in him because he got there pretty quick. I know where the stadium is in relation to Daly's place. That's that's a he he took off at a pretty good sprint. But then the young bucks were there, so that was pretty cool. And then so this even up is still five still five on four, but then. Oh, yeah. Hangman Adam Page comes out of nowhere, makes a save, and then, of course, he goes walks off into the sunset because he just wanted to go to the bar across the street. And that was AEW. I'll tell you what, that was a darn entertaining show. It's only really a cheeseburger show, though, but it seemed a lot better. I think it's because that end, the end was so much better. It's so much different when the promos and all the other stuff in between is shorter than the wrestling matches. With WWE, all the stuff is actually longer than the wrestling matches. So it's weird like that. And this sets us up for AEW. It was a really good go-home show. A cheeseburger of a go-home show. Well, that's it. Um, so again, tomorrow's um, El Vagabundo will be here to do predictions. So I'll try to get that up tomorrow relatively early. This video will probably go up early tomorrow morning. Uh, Friday will be Smackdown. And Saturday is going to be a watch party, I hope. I have like so many technical things I have to take care of. That's okay. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, just like the graphic will say. Have a good night. Good night, and have a good day, everyone. Bye.